Hello, and welcome to VistaSculpt Tutorial 2. In this session, we'll be diving into some of the more advanced tools and features that VistaSculpt offers. If you missed the first tutorial, I highly recommend watching it first to cover the basics of the program. This will give you a solid foundation to build on as we explore these new techniques. Let's get started. First, let's import an image to start working with. In the last tutorial, we directly imported an existing image, but this time, we'll explore the powerful built-in image generator available in VistaSculpt. If you're a pro user, you'll have access to the image generator. To use it, go to the top right panel and click on Generate Image. This feature allows you to create stunning relief images from text prompts. For this tutorial, I'll generate an image that we'll later crop and edit to remove the background. In the prompt box, I'll type, A polar bear wearing fancy glasses, holding a wooden sign with the text welcome. After entering the prompt, we can also choose the resolution. By default, it's set to 1024 by 1024, but other options are available to suit your needs. Once we're ready, we'll click the Generate button to start the process. This will initiate image generation, which typically takes around 20 to 30 seconds to complete. You can generate multiple images using the same text prompt, and each time you'll get a unique result. Once you're happy with the generated image, click Apply to load it. Now, let's focus on removing the background from our 3D model image. There are several ways to do this, but in this case, We'll remove the background directly within the image, as it has a well-defined background that can be easily removed using the built-in tool. To do this, click on Edit Image, then select Remove Background. Note that this feature is only available for pro users. However, if you're a hobby user, don't worry. I'll show you alternative methods for background removal later on. Once the background is removed, Click Apply and close the Edit Image window. Now we're ready to start generating the 3D model. For this example, I want a thicker model, so I'll set the depth scale to 3. If you need a model with less depth, you can lower this value to adjust accordingly. For the detail scale, I'll keep it at 50%, as that's sufficient due to the high contrast in this image. I'll leave the other settings at their defaults and then start the 3D model generation. Once the 3D model generation is complete, click OK. Now, we can inspect the model by adjusting the light position to get a better view of its depth. I'll also solidify the mesh to examine the depth more clearly. Upon closer inspection, we can see that a small section of the mesh hasn't been cut out. To remove this, we'll use the Crop tool, available in the toolbar. To navigate within the Crop tool, hold down the scroll wheel and move the mouse. To start cropping, click the left mouse button to place a vector point. Then continue clicking to outline the area you want to remove. To close the loop, bring your cursor close to the first vector point until it hooks, then click the left mouse button to complete the loop. Initially, the loop appears green, which means it's set to delete everything outside the loop. Since that's not what we need here, let's click the toggle outside button to switch the crop method. The loop will now appear red meaning it will delete only the selected area within the loop. Once we're ready to crop, simply click the Crop button. If you'd like to undo the crop, simply click on the Revert Crop button. This will restore the 3D model to its original state from when we first opened the Crop tool. Now, let's close the Crop tool and delete this 3D model. For demonstration purposes, I'll regenerate the same 3D model this time using the original image. To do this, I'll open the Edit Image window and click on Restore Image. 
This will bring back the original image, including the background. With the image restored, I'll regenerate the 3D model using the same parameters. This time, as expected, the 3D model has retained its background, adding extra thickness between the main object and the background to simulate depth. Let's solidify the model to inspect the depth more closely. We'll focus on removing the background using an alternative method. Since the background appears flat, we can use the Remove Plane tool from the toolbar. This tool is especially useful for quickly removing flat backgrounds from models like this one. To use it, slide the control on the right to adjust the position of the red plane, which marks the area to be removed. Once you've set a depth level that you're satisfied with, click Apply to cut the mesh. Leave the check mark on Create Side Walls to complete the background removal. This method is quick and effective for flat backgrounds, but for more complex shapes, the crop tool provides greater control and flexibility. In this case, we still need to remove the bottom part that hasn't been cropped yet. To do this, click on the crop tool. Inside the crop tool, let's adjust our view by holding down the scroll wheel button and zooming in on the area we want to work with. We'll start placing vector points around the mesh, carefully excluding the area we want to keep. If you need to remove a vertex, simply right-click to stop drawing, then click Undo Vector to go back one step at a time. Now that we've closed the loop around the area, we're ready to crop. We'll leave the crop mode set to inside, as we want to remove everything outside the loop, click Crop, and then close the Crop tool. Let's solidify again to create the side structure. Next, Let's look at how to export the 3D model as a depth map. Click on Export 3D and select PNG as the file format. Then, save the model to start the depth map generation. Depending on the model size and complexity, this process might take a minute or two. Once the generation is complete, you'll have two options to choose from. A standard depth map, where the background is dark, or a depth map with a white background. Choose the option that best fits your needs. In this case, I'll select the high relief option. Finally, I'll also save the model as an STL file. This allows for easy reimporting into Vista Sculpt if you need to make any changes in the future. Now, Let's explore more features by loading a new image from our computer. For this example, I'll choose a low-quality picture to demonstrate the powerful image restoration tool. After selecting the image, the software will prompt you to enhance it. Since this is a low-quality image, we'll click Yes to begin the restoration. This process may take some time, depending on the image's complexity. Once the restoration is complete, you'll see a side-by-side -side comparison of the original and enhanced images. You can zoom in using the zoom slider, and even expand the window for a closer inspection. If you're satisfied with the result, click Apply to confirm the restoration. Now, we're ready to generate the 3D model. In this case, I'll set the depth scale to 4 and the detail level to 100, since the image lacks contrast. This time, 
I'll intentionally keep the background to demonstrate the use of the Z limit tool. For now, I'll set the Z limit to zero. After the 3D model generation, we'll adjust the Z limit value to see how it affects the model's depth. To further refine the model, we'll manually increase the smoothing to remove any noise in the background. To do this, let's check the auto option under smoothing and set the value to 20. In this case, the background isn't too far from the main object, so we don't need to increase the Z limit excessively. I'll set it to 45% for now. Now, we'll generate the 3D model again. As you can see, the background is now much smoother and free from artifacts. Additionally, the background appears closer to the main object. However, in this case, the 45% Z limit was too high, causing the background to overlap with the main object, which has flattened parts of the model shoulder. To correct this, let's adjust the Z limit value from 45% to 35% and click Generate again. The result now appears much more accurate, with the background aligned closely to the main object. This adjustment makes the 3D model more optimized and better contained within the desired depth. Now, I'll demonstrate some additional examples with different 3D models to show how the Z limit can be used to adjust and manipulate the background. In this example, you can see excessive thickness between the main object and the background. To bring the background closer, we'll increase the Z limit. Keep in mind that the ideal Z limit value varies depending on the image and the perceived distance of the background. It's also subjective, depending on how optimized you want the 3D model to be. A good starting point is around 30%, and you can make adjustments from there based on the specific needs of your model. Additionally, if you want to refine the depth of the front of your 3D model, you can use the Depth Optimization tool. To access it, click on Depth Optimization in the toolbar. This tool allows you to adjust and optimize the top portion of the mesh. Adjust the sliders to control how much depth reduction you want at the top of your model. Let's start by setting it to 30%, then click Apply. As you can see, the top of the model has been slightly compressed, resulting in a more contained depth. This helps reduce exaggerated height in taller areas, while preserving depth in lower areas. This feature is particularly useful for engraving when working with limited thickness, allowing you to concentrate depth details where needed. If you'd like to undo this adjustment, simply click Revert. Note that once you close the Depth Optimization tool, the changes become permanent and can no longer be reverted. That's all for this tutorial. Let's quickly recap what we covered. We began by importing and enhancing a low-quality image, then generated an AI-based image from text. Finally, we looked at different ways to prepare the 3D model for engraving, making it more efficient and detailed. In the next tutorial, We'll go even further, exploring VistaSculpt's sculpting tools, including brushes for enhancing and refining details, generating frames, and more. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.